we will uh, go ahead and uh, start with a prayer. We'll request Praveen to lead us in prayer and then we'll get into the study. Praveen, take it away. Yeah. Let's pray. Dear Father, we are grateful to you, Lord, that you have brought us together here again. You have given us another opportunity, Lord, uh, that we, should, we could meet our brethren and to study your word and to meditate on your word, O Lord. Lord, I pray that your leading may be given to us and your spirit's guidance also. We especially ask for your revelation and illumination in our hearts so that we may be able to understand what you want to communicate to us and we may be able to receive it. And the discussions we are going to have may be meaningful and mutually edifying. We want to hear your voice through our pastor as he teaches us, lead us and guide us. And through everything we do, your name be exalted. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, as you you probably noticed in your uh, in your posts today, we are going to continue with the subject of spiritual discipline, and we will start the first of in the series of the actual disciplines that we follow, and uh, we are going to start with prayer today. Uh, I would title this, How Does Prayer Help Us to Grow Spiritually? I, I want you to notice the focus we are having. We are not discussing <clears throat> what is prayer or how to pray. Uh, we are not discussing the necessity of prayer, but we are. Uh, our focus is very particular, and that is how does prayer help us to grow spiritually? All right. So the other things are more basic. We want to now understand um, the reason why we would be involved in a discipline such as prayer. Why do we do that on a regular basis? So prayer is, like I said, one of the first disciplines we are going to discuss today. Um, <clears throat> just, to, just as a, a, a very brief recap, spiritual disciplines can be described as behaviors that facilitate spiritual growth, right? So, and, and as I said earlier, that would be our focus. Where does this lead us? Uh, what are we trying to accomplish and achieve as we participate in these disciplines, right? Spiritual disciplines, just to once again, make it a little bit more uh, to clarify it further, are not works that save us. They are not considered to be works that we are supposed to be in the, involved in so that we get saved. I think that is now we have moved on from that elementary stuff to uh, much, much more deeper uh, and mature stuff, right? So we know that our salvation is in Christ and it is by faith and it is certainly not of works. Spiritual disciplines, once again, are not laws that we obey. Uh, we don't look at them as though they are some particular, you know, uh, specially given laws that Christians must obey as we are asked to involve ourselves in it for a reason. And so they're not laws as such to obey. They are, like I said, uh, means to an end, and the end is maturity, to become like Christ. Maturity basically is Christ-likeness, to become like Christ. Um, <clears throat> just to bring back a quotation from uh, Dallas Willard, uh, it is not a sin to neglect them, right? Okay, uh, I think Praveen is asking me to switch to a stable network. Let me see where I have a problem here. Uh, okay. Praveen, as I switch, switch this. Yeah, please go ahead, Pastor. Right. Uh, previously, it was fluctuating. Even now, it is showing red. Uh, please go ahead. Yeah, now it's fine. It's okay. 
i have moved to another network yeah it, uh, it looks strong okay uh, did you catch most of what i said earlier yes uh, yes we could catch yeah you don't need to repeat that okay fine all right uh i think i stopped when i was trying to quote uh, one of the theologians who discusses um spiritual disciplines and his name is Dallas Willard of course he is the late Dallas Willard he passed away several years ago but he's written extensively on this he says that it is spiritual disciplines are not i mean it's not a sin to neglect them but it is not wise to ignore them they have value they they give us value they add value to our christian lives that is how we must look at spiritual disciplines they are not some laws if we disobey we will you know be sinful no that's not what it is uh, uh it is not wise to ignore them because these spiritual disciplines has value and so today as we discuss and talk about prayer um uh, it that prayer is a discipline that adds tremendous amount of value to our spiritual lives and uh uh it is something that we not only cannot ignore but it would be at our peril to ignore you know prayer uh, every christian needs to recognize that prayer is uh, you know a very vital aspect of the christian life that helps our christian life helps our journey and our walk with our lord and uh, even as the lord himself while he was on the earth in the flesh uh, indulged in these uh, you know disciplines quite extensively himself okay so today what i'm going to do is uh, we uh, like i said our focus will be on how is prayer contributing to our spiritual growth and i'm going to switch the whole uh, you know format i'm going to first take some of your comments i would like you to bring from your personal experience and many of you have been you know uh in the faith for a long time and you have prayed uh i'm sure on a daily basis um uh, how do you feel it has been helpful is there something personal to you that where prayer brings you know some uh some help to you some solace some uh some kind of strength uh i would like you to share uh with me and with all of us your personal experience and journey in the discipline of prayer and then i would like to wrap it up with uh what i have seen from the scriptures that very clearly points out how prayer helps our spiritual lives and our spiritual growth maybe you also want to discuss some uh questions or doubts that you may have had about prayer i know there are christians who struggle with praying because they feel that they are not being heard or they are being you know it's just a waste of time and uh, so some people are unable to pray and i i know i have i mean heard of people say that uh, they just con continuously get distracted while praying so let me open it up at this time and uh, get some thoughts from you which will spur our discussions further and like i said i'll come back and uh share with you what i could find from the scriptures that very clearly points to prayer being uh, a tremendous aid for our spiritual lives okay the floor is open so go ahead yes suri murthy go ahead make sure you unmute yourself before you speak when you when we pray earnestly it is not we that we who pray it is a spirit which prays okay which we can feel right when you say spirit i'm uh, uh, you are specifically talking about holy spirit right yes okay okay uh does can you explain can you explain that experience a little bit more perhaps uh, how do you we, feel when you we are pour out, we pour out our feelings 
when we pour out our feelings, we can feel that it is not we who pay, we who pray. It is something else which is guiding us to pray. So in the last 40 years, 40 years or so, God must have been, God might have given me uh, not less than 10,000 problems. <laughs> not less than. In all those 10,000 problems, I had to rush to God every time for solving the problem. And God has solved most of the problems, of course. Right. And, and many important things, he has not solved the problems. That, okay. was, that also is there. Okay. Yes, that's very interesting. I mean, how you mentioned that, uh, how it's almost you're, you're, you're sounding as though the Holy Spirit is like a partner with you, partnering with you in your prayer life. Uh, that's very interesting. And maybe you are praying something that you never thought about uh, because the Holy Spirit probably is uh, inspiring you, guiding you, and maybe even helping you with the words. Uh, when you say God has not solved, I mean... Uh, did you want to throw any more light on that? The obvious one, which many people know, which I don't want to say. Okay, right. Uh, uh, I'm presuming that you're not saying that God has not heard you, uh, but you feel that God preferred... It is, not it, it is his will. It is his will. Okay, okay, right. Interesting. Thank you, Surya Murthy. It's very helpful to understand how you, your 40 years of experience. Yes, Bertram, go ahead. Yeah. And then David. Yes. <laughs> Prayer is important. Uh, and we should always be conscious that Jesus, what Surya Murthy was alluding to, was uh, referring to is the Holy Spirit. Yeah, the Spirit of Christ. We must always know that in our prayer, Christ is with us praying. Uh, so, uh, um, we have to be, uh, yes, it's not sinful if you miss it, but it's not wise if it'll be it not, it's not wise if you ignore it. It is, we have to be conscious of our prayers that, uh, and prayer does does bring about results. I can tell you uh, any number of times that my, how my prayer has brought results. And uh, it can be sure, the result, yeah, it can be a no, can be wait, or can be, uh, can be instant, the prayer as Mr. Armstrong, late, uh, late Mr. Armstrong used to mention. But uh, I just would like to, uh, uh, yeah, like to, like to go along with Surumuti by saying the spirit of Christ helps us in a prayer and prays along with us. And hence we have to be, uh, give it due importance. Yeah, thank you, Bertie. Uh, I think you uh, more or less uh, reflect what Suri Murthy said, and it's uh, I can see how you you seem to be saying that you have such confidence in prayer because you have experienced the answers, right? Uh, so that's that's uh, that's very nice to know, right? Uh, David, you had a thought. Go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Um, first of all, uh, uh, it was a challenge for me. Uh, as a believer in the initial stages of um, rather being more disciplined in prayer because uh, I was more, uh, I mean, taught in a, in a dis discipline aspect <coughs> where, where, uh, where if you pray, God will work. Um, uh, I believe, um, and as I was teaching with different groups and uh, different congregations, and when I uh, come across Grace Communion Church, the relational aspect struck me very strongly uh, <clears throat> because prayer is a communication and it's an act of relationship with the Lord. And um, uh, when we see the Lord's prayer, he addresses his, his father as our father, makes it very relational and personal. And then and it is very personal, you have the freedom of expressing whatever you have in your heart. And uh, the Lord knows intimately what's in the heart of a person. But it, is, it shows that we should be sincere in expressing what is there in our heart. And uh, whether, it, whether it is 
good thing or a tough thing. I would not say sad thing. There's no sad thing as such. It's 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 tough thing. Uh, the thing where I I need to personally change. <laughs> so th th that's the uh, inefficacy in me, which I need to ask the Lord to work. Uh, of course, the Holy Spirit, which the Lord Himself has sent to us, is um, uh, uh, is giving us the information through the prayer. And moreover, the Lord Jesus Christ is in interceding uh, to us uh, at the right hand of the Father. So he's, he's, he's interceding constantly for us. So it's an amazing act uh, of prayer and uh, one should not neglect, but uh, one should uh, really uh, uh, go as often as uh, he or she is uh, really confounded by the cares of the world and things, things like that. And uh, basically, due to lack of prayer, there's lots of relational distortion which has been happening in the world, and uh, which is a very sad thing. And because, again, it boils down to uh, the teachings with the churches and clergymen have not really discussed on the area of prayer. And hence, uh, this has, Satan has taken an upper hand in distorting the relationships and uh, taking over. So uh, I personally believe, I'll just uh, pose it in a, two, uh, in a minute. Uh, I personally believe a prayer should be very personal and intimate. And of course, we need to be reverential because we are addressing the creator. We are addressing the creator. And uh, one thing I always believe is our creator is an incomprehensible God. We have not known him completely. So we need to be reverential in whatever we ask. And he's been so gracious and mindful of taking care of us all the days of our life. Thank you very much for this time. Thank you, David. I think uh, with uh, all that you said, uh, one thing seemed to come out quite clearly and that you, you, you seem to indicate that uh, you are confident in being able to share every thought in your heart with, with God in prayer, in the sense that uh, whether it is good, whether it is bad, it is disappointing, whatever, you seem to have that confidence to be able to uh, share even the deepest you know, thoughts that you have. And so, yeah, in that respect, I think uh, you mentioned relational. Uh, that, that, of course, is a very, very interesting and a very important point, which we will touch upon in a while. All right. Thank you, David, for your thoughts. Remember, we are discussing, you know, your personal experience with prayer and how it may have helped you in your walk and faith. Uh, Vanessa has uh, raised her hand, but Mr. Rao, did you have a thought? I thought, yes, Mr. Rao, and then we'll come to Vanessa. Go ahead. Unmute yourself, Mr. Rao. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When, when I pray, uh, I believe that God hears our prayers and most of the time I got the results and whenever I, I pray, I pray that your will be, the, will, will be done hmm. and that gives me uh, a peace of mind. So whenever I pray, I believe that God is hearing and uh, is helping me, is answering me. So that gives me uh, the confidence uh, and a peace of mind. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. <laughs> you seem to reiterate peace of mind. I think uh, that is so very much, uh, you know, missing today, uh, just to be able to go to bed with, with a, you know, with, with a sense of peace. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Rao. For, Letting us know that, right? Vanessa, go ahead. Okay, now uh, my my personal experience about uh, myself and prayer is, is that uh, I was, as you know, everybody knows that I was born in a Catholic family, and we were taught that uh, rosary, saying the rosary was very important. So 
I used to say the rosary all the time. Even if I'm traveling in a bus or sitting somewhere or any time, I used to keep reciting the rosary. But I never ever for how many, maybe 40 something plus years, I never really spoke to God, like one-on-one -on -one, spoke to him. I was more focused on saying the rosary. Okay, okay. Each decade of the rosary, I had a particular prayer for it, praying for a particular person or particular uh, thing. Okay, that was five decades and five things I used to pray for, but never one to one speaking with God or Jesus or the Holy Spirit. But I can truthfully say that after I came to know Grace Communion Church in 2019, my full, my full way of thinking has gone that I stopped saying the rosary. I came to know that the rosary is not, not the thing that we have to say. So I stopped at 2019, stopped saying the rosary. And I really focused myself on really praying, just speaking to God. Just speaking to Jesus, I came to know about Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and now I just speak. And uh, sometimes I'm so depressed, I cry, and I've, I've noticed that that sometimes when my, my uh, son, the younger one who I'm so very fond of, if, if he hasn't uh, phoned me or something, I just have to think of it. I only think and say that, uh, God, why he hasn't called me or if I have called him, why he hasn't answered my call. And you won't believe that immediately I have got a call from him, immediately. That much, that much of hurt and sorrow I had in my heart that immediately my children have called me. Or immediately something, if, if I was in trouble somewhere, then I was helped. That much God came to know how much I needed him. And uh, I, I know that prayer really, if, if you really are into prayer, really praying, really with wholeheartedness and God, God hears no matter where you are. It doesn't mean that I have to kneel. I don't kneel down on the ground. I'm not kneeling or I'm not lying on the ground or I'm not uh, like, I mean, saying anything, but just, just that feeling in me, he hears me. And uh, one experience I want to tell you that uh, uh, it was on 29th of September last year, 29th September, I had just gone to the market and I did a little uh, marketing and I, I was coming back on my way home and just like this kind, I just talk while if I'm alone going marketing, so walking back. So I just talk to God and I pray and I say something and all that. So I don't know this feeling came into me that I really missed God. I miss talking to Jesus. Like, like, like how it is when you have a lover or a husband and you want to hear his voice every time and you want to phone him and you want him to talk to you and you to talk to him. That feeling came in me so strongly. It came into me that, that I realized that, that I was coming closer to God. I was coming closer. I came to know about Jesus. I came to know about the Holy Spirit. So I said that this was just grace and bless his blessings that were coming on me. So, I mean, in, the, in these two years, what I can say is that I have really, there are so many occasions where I have felt the presence of God and the Holy Spirit in me. And I know that you don't, you don't need particular prayers to talk. It is just talking. It is a conversation. If you have that much of faith and trust, he's hearing you and he, he gives you what you need. Like, like, I don't say I need this, I want this. Yes, I need it. If, if it is his will, he will give it to me. But I think he knows and he understands. So prayer has helped me a lot, a lot. That's what I want to say. All right. Thank you, Vanessa. When you were mentioning about, uh, you know, uh, saying the rosary and uh, with my little knowledge that I have, uh, I, I presume there is a, way you do it and the number of times you do it, uh, you seem to have moved from a recitational prayer <laughs> to a conversational prayer, right? Uh, recitational is, recitation is more ritualistic, but conversational is more relational. Uh, so it's very interesting that you have been able to find a relationship 
rather than just regard god as someone where you have to please with you know the number of times you do it uh, i i can't help but uh, just think about the indian word mantra <laughs> many times i think even christians regard prayer like a mantra or think it is effectual like a mantra uh, in our indian uh, you know uh, situation but um, i think we are beginning to understand the conversational what you say uh, quality and the value of prayer thank you uh, vanessa i think uh, it spurred some thoughts in my mind as you were sharing your personal experience wonderful to know that you moved on from more ritualistic to to relational yes. right i think mrs noah would like to say something yes uh, mrs noah if you can unmute yourself if someone can help you do that uh linda can you help Lin uh, mrs noah unmute we can't hear you mrs noah uh, uh, praveen could you unmute her uh, Oh, Pastor. Linda is there. I guess Linda could do that. One minute. I'm going there, Uncle. Somewhere else. Okay. Yes. I think Mrs. No would like to share something. That's wonderful because uh, it is a very quiet participant. Uh, let's see. For 90 years of age, uh, she must be having some pearls of wisdom for us. Right. And we get the box also along with <laughs> that. Mrs. Noah, go ahead. We are, we are, we can, we should be able to hear you now. Yeah. Let me tell you one thing. When I was young, my, in my school days, they taught me how to pray. And in my home also, my mother used to teach me how to pray. But later on, I realized that how to pray whom to pray and who will listen to my prayers. And, he, and I came to know that the God Father, God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit are in me throughout my life. Not only my life, through, he knows me. He knows you. You know everyone on the face of the earth. So like that, he is our father, more intimate. And he is our brother, Jesus Christ. I never, ever, he leaves me, left me, or will never leave. So that is how I feel that intimacy with him is more precious than anything else in the world. And above all, he has given me his Holy Spirit so that he will help me throughout my life. So far, I carried on this like uh, my own experience, I had went through so much of stress pain. All, with all that he has brought me to this stage. And I thank Mr. Zechariah for teaching me and also our church who taught me so many things. I bless him and pray for you all. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. No. What a pleasure to hear you. You said in your younger days, but we feel you're still young, <laughs> young at heart at least. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's once again, I, it, it's wonderful to see uh, or, uh, once again here that, that relational perspective that we are beginning to recognize. You know, Mrs. Noah mentioned about father, brother, God the Father, and Jesus Christ as a brother. Once again, uh, that sense of intimacy we feel with God. And I believe uh, that is something that we have progressed in, in our fellowship. So thank you, Mrs. Noah. Uh, what, a, what a pleasure to hear that God has walked with you and continues to walk with you. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, uh, we, we, we value your, uh, uh, your uh, you know, your being with us. Thank you so much for taking the time just to join us. Wonderful. Great. Uh, yeah, so very interesting thoughts that I'm getting, your personal perspectives. Bertram, you had another thought? Go ahead, Bertie. We can, I, th I think we should hear you. Yeah, uh, uh, this thing, uh, what I'm, uh, uh, I could come to know from all the 
uh, testimonies uh, our brethren are, are giving us is very encouraging to know the level of trust and confidence one is having in in a living God. And I think that's very important because in Proverbs 3, uh, I think uh, verse 3, it mentions trust in the Lord with all your heart, wholeheartedly, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, in all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make straight your path, or he will direct your path. It even says that if you even when you are, when you are praying in a relationship reverentially and you know the answer will come and you know you're doing the will of God and you know that you can trust him and he is your what a peace of mind you have. But even our wrong thoughts or even our wrong decision, God says in that verse, he will straight make it straight uh, even to that level. And of course, he says he'll direct our paths. And uh, oh, wonderful. Another place it says that uh, he will uh, teach us and instruct us in the way we should go. He will guide us with our eye, all that, you know, and uh, so wonderful it is, you know, that our God does answer. Uh, as uh, as uh, Mrs. Sandry said, all through our life, Mr. Rao says, and all are expressing. So it's very good to continue in the trust in our living God. Thank you, Bertie. I think uh, once again, I, I, I see that uh, uh, how God is involved so intimately with us you know, and helping us, even as you quote some of those scriptures that seem to be coming out loud and clear that it is not just our efforts in prayer, but God himself joins us with us in our prayer. Thank you, Bertie, for reminding us. I think Pearl had a thought. Pearl, would you like to share your, your, your personal experience with prayer? Hello, Uncle. Yes, Uncle. Uh, as a child, I used to... Uh, pray a lot more I feel like and uh, I think uh, um, during prayer I would uh, pour my heart out and even if words didn't come in a way that I would understand myself I, I, I somehow in my heart uh, I would believe that God would understand even if it didn't make any sense to me so that was what prayer was for me and still is and uh, um, there was this um I, mean, I used to also believe that we had to only kneel and pray and all that. But as I grew up, I understood that uh, prayer doesn't have to be like that. Uh, it can be conversational. We don't have to sit in one place and pray. Uh, thanks to my mother who used to tell me, no, you can do anywhere. You can just talk to God and that is what prayer is. So uh, prayer really helped me uh, in a way that I would express my thoughts and even if it didn't, make any sense to me I knew that God would understand and there is the there is a verse in the Bible that I don't remember now but uh, it says that um, even if we don't have the words our spirit calls out to God and he understands it so that uh, that is one verse I hold on to a lot um, yeah that's all I want to say okay thank you very much Pearl for sharing uh, a very interesting what you said with regards to, you know, the fact that we don't have to worry about protocol, you know, when we come to God, God is our father. And so uh, we don't have to worry about our grammar and our perfect uh, English <laughs> or whatever language we use uh, or posture, like you said. Um, it's uh, just nice to know that you have that sense of confidence that God will understand. Uh, and we can approach him, you know, in, uh, in, in, the, in the most uh, confident way. So, yes, thank you, Pearl, for helping us with that. Uh, is there any other thoughts you'd like to share? Otherwise, at this moment, I'd like to just share a few, uh, you know, scriptures and thoughts with you. Uh, and then we'll, we should come back for uh, some more discussion, hopefully. I Let want me... to say one thing. Linda, go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry. I... Yes, go ahead. No problem. Uh, usually, when we pray, there's a kind of assurance that we get. Uh, you talk to God as if uh, you talk to Him as your friend. And the moment you say Amen at the end of the prayer, afterwards, the feeling that you have, the kind of uh, assurance that you get, actually calms you down, helps you out, 
and gives you that reassurance that God hears our prayer, no matter how. Like I agree with all the points that all of you have said. No matter how you are praying, but He is always there and He is listening to you. Uh, as the Sanjira Ansel also said that we have to uh, ask for His will to be done in our life. And when you do that and you right. submit into God's hands, you see a lot of things that happen around you in your life. Like, okay. Uh, this, this, uh, whenever you pray and you, uh, especially when you're praying with among people and all of you say Amen, there, at the end of the prayer, there's some kind of assurance that you always get. I feel that in my life. Okay. I just want to. Thank you, Linda. I like that word assurance. It's almost sounds like as though, you know, we pray and uh, after the prayer, after the amen, you have a sense of relief that somebody important has heard you, right? Uh, it almost seems like that. So yes, it is uh, so soothing to the soul. Uh, like you said, uh, you know, that sense of assurance you get. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, sharing all your thoughts. Let me quickly just go through some thoughts that I had put together. Uh, and uh, uh, like I said, hopefully we should have some more time to discuss if you'd like some more uh, time for that. Uh, now, some things are a repetition of what you already said, but uh, let's once again recognize we are discussing how prayer helps our spiritual growth our spiritual maturity, all right? And the very first one, I, something that most of you touched upon, strengthens our relationship with God. Because prayer is a relational experience, right? It is relational in nature. Uh, when, especially when we move away from the ritualistic, prayer is a conversation, like many of you said. And it certainly brings us closer to God. It also shows God is personal. He's hearing us. He wants to hear us. So he's a personal God. We recognize him as that. And I think some of you said, talking about the relational, we never pray alone. When we pray, like uh, Suri Murthy said, Holy Spirit is guiding us, leading us, inspiring us. Mrs. Noah mentioned about how you feel a sense of connection with our father, with our brother, Jesus Christ. Uh, and so we are never alone when we pray. Can you imagine that? So next time when you pray, remember, you have you may be alone in your room, but the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are just surrounding you. Isn't that wonderful? That's the kind of relationship that you know we recognize. In Romans chapter 8 and verse 26, it says, and the Holy Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray, but the Holy Spirit prays. For us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. Verse 27, and the father who knows all hearts knows what the spirit is saying. For the spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. Very inspiring verse to help us to understand that we are not alone. We are being helped and there is a participation of the triune God in our prayer life. Uh, and, you know, just to take that relational angle a little bit more further, prayer actually strengthens our bonds between one of each one of us. It strengthens the bonds between believers. Notice what uh, Philippians chapter 2 tells us, verses 3 and 4. Do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility of mind, regard one another as more important than yourselves, do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. And when we do that in prayer, when we pray for others, like we are doing regularly, uh, it connects us with one another, with our brothers and sisters. So it's not only, you know, God that we have a relationship with, but with one another that constantly helps us to grow spiritually. Secondly, Prayer helps us to wait on God. That's the spiritual maturity we have or we develop as we pray. We develop patience. We develop a sense of hope. Daily prayer keeps us looking forward to a better tomorrow. Even as some of you said, we pray according to God's will. 
for his will to be done. And we know his will is to give us a better tomorrow if today hasn't been as good. But he gives us the strength to carry on today. All right. Um, and as we wait on God, I'm sure we are also inspired to take steps of faith in the faith that he gives to us. We move on and it, 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 and it continues to help us to wait on God. In Psalm 130, it says, wait for the Lord. My whole being waits. And in his word, I put my hope. Of course, David was a very, very strong in that, you know, in his prayer life. Uh, and in verse 6, in uh, verse, uh, Psalm 130, verse 6, it also says, I wait for the Lord more than watchmen wait for the morning. More than watchmen wait for the morning. So, uh, Waiting on the Lord is a spiritual maturity that we all develop even as we pray. A third point I'd like to bring us uh, to, for us to consider is it develops an attitude of thanksgiving. You know, prayer helps us to become more thankful and grateful. You know, uh, the apostle reminds us writing to the Philippians. Uh, he says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, right? Uh, so there is a thanksgiving or a, a, an attitude of gratitude that comes along with our prayer to God, recognizing that he is the one who's hearing us and will help us. So prayer, perhaps I could say, Reminds us to be thankful, not just self-seeking. A fourth point, it makes us humble. Humility is a very important aspect of the Christian faith and our Christian walk. Prayer makes us humble. How does it make us humble? Well, we are asking God for help. What When we are asking God for help, we are realizing that we are not, we are not self-sufficient. We need to be helped. We need a savior. We need someone to intervene for our very difficult tasks. You know, even as Suri Murthy was saying, maybe he didn't get the answers for some of his difficulties, but I'm sure he got the strength, you know, and uh, the resolve to remain faithful. So prayer makes us humble because when we pray, what we are doing, we are surrendering ourselves. We are surrendering our control to God and asking God, please control the situation for me. And in that respect, it is helping us to be humble. Galatians chapter six tells us for if anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. And if one thing prayer should help us understand is that we indeed are nothing, that God is everything for us. Right. Uh, another point I'd like to bring up and I think this should be the fifth point. Prayer helps us get a better sense of ourselves. You know, when we are praying, especially perhaps alone, we are connecting with God. It definitely brings you closer to God as you encounter God in prayer. But as you pray, you are also introspecting. It forces you to introspect and it helps you to see yourself in better light. Interestingly, by Columbia University in the U.S. shows that prayer reduces ego <laughs> and promotes humility. Of course, we already spoke about humility, but it reduces ego. In other words, it brings a sense of reality to yourself. You know, as you pray to God, hopefully you, you, you recognize, you know, you and your uh, weaknesses and your struggles a little it brings it brings it into sharper focus all right uh, i remember the you know in the scriptures the prayer of the of the publican you know who comes and prays and says god forgive me a sinner how did he recognize that how does he know that he is a sinner uh, it's because as he's conversing with god there is a conviction that he needs God's, you know, uh, redemption. He needs God's cleansing and, of course, his forgiveness. And that is something he comes to understand even as he prays. Interestingly enough, 
the, the, the Pharisee who prayed, you know, probably uh, was not able to recognize that, you know, because he prayed completely with the wrong attitude. And he only praised himself. And that in one sense is helping, should have helped them see the perverseness of his heart. You know, I wish the Pharisee recognized, what am I saying? How, why am I praising myself? You know, he should have seen himself there. And uh, prayer can help us get a better sense of ourselves. And finally, uh, just two more thoughts. Prayer helps us to avoid and resist temptation. We are told by Jesus himself. He says, watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. For the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Jesus knows our flesh is weak. We, we have to resist temptation, but many times we give in to temptation. And that is the weakness of the flesh. But Jesus says, pray, watch and pray. Of course, watch yourself spiritually and pray about it. it the prayer gives you that strength to resist. And so prayer in that respect continues to help us to grow spiritually. And finally, one more thought. Prayer is a way for us to participate in God's work. You know, uh, we always are so eager to want to do God's work. But, you know, one of the ways we do it is actually prayer. Uh, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, the apostle tells the church in Thessalonica, he says, as for other matters, brothers and sisters, he says, pray for us that the message of the Lord may spread rapidly and be honored just as it was with you. Notice pray, uh, uh, Paul is saying, asking the brothers and sisters to pray that the message of the Lord may be spread. In other words, they are actually involving themselves in evangelism. Prayer can be a way to be involved in an evangelistic effort, right? And he goes on to say in verse two, and prayer that we may be delivered, pray that we may be delivered from wicked and evil people for not everyone has faith. So as they pray for Paul, they are actually participating in God's work in the redemption of humanity. I remember one uh, older person uh, back when I was at college, uh, I remember this particular person, uh, you know, a very old lady, uh, you know, probably like Mrs. Noah. Uh, she, she was more or less bedridden, but she, you know, when she passed away, uh, they found a book, you know, by her side and they, and some wondered what is that book? And in that book were all the prayer requests people had, you know, made. And she would take the time to pray for each one of those prayer requests. And I thought to myself, you know, what a wonderful way to be involved in God's work. Even though you have no opportunity to go out of your house or out of your room, and yet she was involved in God's work, I just pray. And so I, I just wanted to bring you these thoughts uh, to help us understand prayer is a very powerful spiritual discipline. And it is a way, uh, uh, one of the ways where we are constantly growing in, uh, you know, spiritual maturity, because these are some of the ways that it infuses in us the very character of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Okay, we've got some time left. Uh, if you should have any other thoughts you'd like to share or uh, anything you'd like to say about what we just uh, I, I just uh, shared with you these points. Feel free to do so at this moment. Okay. Yes, Vanessa, go ahead. Okay. Uh, prayer, as, you, as we know, it is uh, just uh, talking to God and being closer to him. But I also heard that, that okay, this is maybe not concerning the, the topic that we are doing today, but I heard, or oh, maybe it is written in the Bible, that we need to 
quote quote some things of the bible like all of you you will say from matthew so and so so and so and this so and so so and so and you all are able to quote things and i always feel guilty that i am not able to quote because i of course never ever used to read the bible i had never even read the bible and as as you know i started reading it and uh, i have finished the new testament and i'm from the old testament also i have started reading but i'm reading to understand and to know so sometimes i feel guilty that that i don't know how to quote things like sometimes if if you are talking about a particular passage or a particular thing then i i know that i have read it and uh, what a meaning it is to me but then uh, so is it i mean is god <laughs> saying anything that i cannot quote the bible but i know the bible means how much i have read and what i am knowing so i want to know about that okay well that's a very interesting question uh, you know you probably heard uh other people praying and they quoting scripture in their prayer and you were wondering you know <laughs> uh, you probably uh, haven't been able to do that as pro prolifically as the others uh, just to just to help you understand prayer is not a sermon <laughs> right you are not giving a sermon to god <laughs> normally we, we 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 give a sermon and quote scriptures uh let me go back to what we discussed earlier prayer is a conversation with god and uh, the fact that you can't quote scripture in prayer uh, is not is not a handicap for god you know uh, so god is not going to get upset if you don't use king james english in your prayer or if you don't quote a particular scripture in prayer no god, god is not god you know our god is a father you know a father listens to a young child babble something and the father is 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 uh, you know uh, ecstatic the father is very happy to hear the child speak even though the child may not you know speak very uh, very correctly so uh, uh, a short answer to your question don't worry about the fact that you can't quote scripture in fact <laughs> uh, uh, you don't have to quote scripture to god god knows the scripture <laughs> he himself is the scripture in one sense he is the living word of god so please don't feel uh, you know uh, that you must have to quote scripture uh, you you may you may you may as you pray and you're reminded of a scripture uh, you may mention it as a way to help yourself not that god is you have to remind god of his own scripture does it help vanessa i'm not sure if i uh, you know touched on what you wanted <laughs> yes yes it has helped okay thank you uh, if there's anyone who would like to share anything on that yes franklin go ahead sir my answer is very simple sir very pragmatic uh, uh, god has blessed me i am the most blessed person sir on this earth on the face of the earth most of my prayers were answered i would venture to say god has answered 9 out of 10 prayers of mine <laughs> of course the question may remain why have i not asked for a spouse <laughs> but i am i god gave me enough strength sir because now you should be ready to take a spouse na so i did not pray for a spouse to be honest and then that is one thing sir uh, but even if god doesn't hear your prayers no, sir his answer can be uh, wait or uh, hold on Uh, and then in this context no sir i remember uh, one key verse that we should always keep uh, uh, as you have been repeatedly emphasizing so over the past decade who is god you have to understand the fundamental points sir and one of the key verses i would like to turn is the book of lamentations chapter 3 it says his mercies never cease his compassions never fail they are new every morning great is thy faithfulness the god that you and i come to is a god of compassion a god of love and when you understand this no sir now uh, mr rao's uh, third principle falls in place remember that god even though he keeps you on hold his will is the best will it is the best will for the individual it is the best will for the family it is the best will for the church it is the best will for the society at large because in his time god will take care of all it 
Uh, what happens if you keep, uh, if you are a specialist in making mistakes, I mess up things. Even in my income tax filing, I make mistakes. Okay, God will take care of it. And he, he is love and his faithfulness will uh, take care of it and he will see that the problems are solved. I can give you n number of examples where God bailed me out and bailed our family out repeatedly from crisis. So uh, what you should remember is God's will is the best will. And as you are a follower, remembering that God is love and God is faithfulness, you begin to grow on the inside. As you said, na, we begin to learn to submit to his will. We learn to become more humble. We begin to think like God thinks, thinking of others' needs and praying for others. And so it helps you to grow in his grace and love. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Franklin, that uh, you remind us once again, uh, uh, you know, it helps us to first and foremost know who God is when we pray, because that will definitely help our prayer life. And just on a lighter note, I hope you have no regrets that you didn't ask for a spouse. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, we got a few minutes left, maybe three or four minutes. Uh, anyone, any, any personal uh, thoughts you'd like to share regarding prayer? Yes, uh, Bertie, go ahead. Bertie, go ahead. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, very important in our lives is the uh, overcoming, uh, conquering, as the Bible says, uh, you know, and overcoming, you know, uh, in this world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And this, uh, this overcomer, uh, the Lord, uh, 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 a great God and, and a creator, the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ is in us. We all have alluded that if we have the, we need the help of the Holy Spirit, and we and we need uh, we should be realizing that Christ is in us, and the Spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit is in us, uh, you know, helping us all the way. And in uh, as his answer can be no, wait for a while or not at all. But uh, that Holy Spirit in us, you should always realize that the Holy Spirit in us will give us the power to overcome. Uh, we have our battles, we have our ups and downs, but the Holy Spirit is indwelling in you and we have uh, eternal life in us. We have the living God in us and all through our grace of our great God and, and, uh, and the blessed one, you know, Jesus Christ has made it all, made it, made it for us. Okay, right. Thank you, Bertie. Yes, uh, uh, very important uh, thoughts that we need to keep in mind. Well, we are almost uh, out of time. Uh, we can take just a few minutes uh, in case there's any other thoughts. Vanessa, yes, you, you raised your hand. Yeah, uh, what I want to know, another thing is that, uh, as we say, um, it is personal, it is like a conversation that we are having with our Father, God. So, uh, supposing like we are praying, or oh, I'm giving you an example of myself also, like sometimes when I'm praying, and then uh, something else, some other work pops up. Oh, I think that I have to do something like uh, example, like I've put up uh, maybe the hot water to get hot and I forgot that I've put it up and suddenly I'm praying. And when I'm praying, then I'm realizing that the water is up and maybe it's boiling. So I just leave the prayer and I go and put it off. So I sometimes feel guilty that in between prayer, it's not one time, it's many times, sometimes uh, I get distracted while I'm praying to God and do some other work. So I want to know whether it is really offense or whether it is if okay. I'm having a conversation with God, he's like my father. So even at home, supposing we are in the kitchen or, or your mother is in the kitchen or someone and we are having a conversation from one room to the other room and we are doing things. So it is it that sort of a way or is it that we have to have that much respect for God that when we pray to him, we have to only pray and not get distracted or leave it in between to do something. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, just to, uh, you know, uh, give you a very short answer. Uh, you mentioned respect for God. Obviously, you know, respect and reverence for God and worship of God is um, paramount. There is no compromise on that. But that doesn't mean to say that uh, if you find while you're praying that your house is on fire, 
that you have to finish your prayer and then go and attend to that. Obviously not. The question, you know, what I'd like to say is, why don't you carry on praying as you go and switch off the stuff? You know, I can tell you something that as I'm driving, many times, you know, as I'm driving in my car, uh, you know, I'm praying. Is it, is it wrong or disrespectful as I drive to pray? Sometimes I see some, you know, sad thing taking place. I pray or sometimes I just remember something. I, 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 I bring it to God. And as I drive, I pray. So uh, it is your, remember, it's your attitude, which is important. It's not the mechanics and the physical perspectives. It is your attitude. And, you know, as Paul says, pray without ceasing. You know, pray always. So there is an attitude of prayer you carry with you. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean you're disrespectful, but of course, being reverential and worshipful is, of course, very essential. Okay, so next time you, you remember something, you get off. You know, you, if you're sitting, get off and continue praying as you go to the other room and switch off the stuff. <laughs> okay. Right. Yes, Franklin. Sir, what I learned in life is, sir, God's will is the best will for the individual, for the family, and for everybody. Uh, sir, yeah. let me give you two examples huh? uh, on the intellectual plane. Sir, Paul uh, faced a thorn in the flesh, and he pled with God, not once, not twice, three times. And God said, my grace is sufficient for him. And what helped Paul to move on in life was, he knew that God's will is the best will for him, and for his work on the uh, on the earth. Another example I'd like to give you is from the Old Testament, the, the patriarch Job, you know, sir. I'm sure, you know, sir, when Job went through the horrors of life, when he went through excruciating pain, he must have asked God, uh, Lord, uh, why can't you intervene and protect me? Please heal me. But, you know, sir, uh, God kept him on hold. And Job makes a beautiful statement, sir, which I would like everyone to remember. He says, though you will slay me, yet I will cling to you. Uh, one particular translation says that uh, Job understood who God is, that he's God of, a God of love and a God of faithfulness who will take care of, his, uh, take care of him in the year and now in the ultimate, his ultimate destiny. That is why Jesus said, sir, uh, do not fear them who can kill the body, but fear them who can kill the soul. Okay. Thank you, Franklin. I think uh, since you quoted scripture, let me quote you one, one scripture in closing. Uh, I'll, just, I'll just bring it up on the screen for all of us to see, right? I hope you can see that, you know, uh, uh, that's a uh, verse. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective, as one translation says. So uh, maybe on that note, you know, let us re be reminded that prayer is indeed powerful in a, in a particular way, in a spiritual way, very effective. And uh, as we continue to talk about spiritual growth, uh, this is a discipline that we cannot be negligent of. I think Bertie has one final thought. And after which, Vanessa, would, would you like to do the honors for us and close in prayer? Right? Yes. Bertie, finish your thought and then Vanessa will lead us in a prayer. Yes, uh, Mr. Zachariah. Uh, while praying, uh, a number of times, I've lost a count of it, a number of times, get distracted in the mind. You're praying and your thoughts have gone somewhere else. You're not necessarily your call to the kitchen or you physically get up uh, and go. Uh, uh, but in the mind, you're still there praying in the mind, but you get distracted. Different, uh, distracted in the sense, uh, not uh, some, some, uh, some, some noise or something, but your thoughts have uh, in while you're in prayer and it's on a particular uh, on a particular wavelength, you could say, you're thinking of something else, and then uh, then you you know then you realize you're sidetracked, and then you come back all in the mind uh, at the time of praying. Uh, yeah. I, I've experienced that. Um, many would have also. That's that's a very human uh, you know it's it's a human tendency. It's uh, one of our weaknesses and failings, but. Uh, uh, we, you know, we, we catch ourselves when we are distracted. And so we carry on, you know, and we, we do better next time. Anyway, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts. Uh, we'll come back and discuss. Uh, of course, we leave prayer here. Next, next week, we will discuss another spiritual discipline. Let's close today in prayer. And if uh, may I request Manessa to lead us. Thank you.
Okay, just just before I say the prayer, I would like to say this because uh, Pastor, when 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 we started and you told Parveen to say the uh, opening prayer, uh, you won't believe I thought that I would like to say the opening prayer, but. Uh, I mean, does pastor have certain people who they tell to say the prayer or do I have to tell that I want to say the prayer and see how God has worked his miracle and you are telling me to do the closing prayer. Okay. <laughs> so okay. God, God hears, he hears my, he heard my thought and yeah. he has given me to say Interesting. the closing Looks prayer. Looks like the Holy Spirit has whispered in my ear. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Okay, Go ahead. Let's bow. Let's bow our heads in prayer and thank the Lord, the Father, his, his beloved Son and his helper, the Holy Spirit, who has come into each one of us this evening. They have given us the opportunity and the time to attend this Bible service, which has been a help to so many of us who have, we have been able to share our thoughts and our doubts and clear everything and to show how much we love the Father, our Creator, and His Son, our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit who is showing us the way. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for this evening, this day that has come to the end. We thank you for this night that has come and giving each one of us an opportunity not only to see a wonderful day of your glorious, mighty works, but to have a night, a night with food and shelter and good health, peace, happiness, joy. We thank you once again, Father, and we hope that you are able to have another Bible study and where we can all be a part of it. We thank you for the help that each one of us has given to the other. We thank you for Pastor who also shares so much and gives us an insight into your word. We thank you also, Father, for each and every one of us also who shares their, their thoughts and, and their experiences with one of us. We thank you, Lord, in your good and faithful son's name, the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 And thank you again. All, have, all of you have a blessed night. Look forward to seeing you again for, uh, on our online meeting.